After a thorough and comprehensive search, Samsung has chosen Taylor, Texas as the site of its new state-of-the-art semiconductor chip fabrication plant. Something massive is rising from the plains of Texas, a $50 billion microchip factory, one of the costliest and most complex construction projects in American history. But it is more than a factory. It is the front line in the global chip race, where nations compete for control over the technology that powers everything from AI to electric vehicles. On paper, it looks like a marvel meant to rival TSMC's mega facility in Arizona. But even before it came fully alive, the project began to struggle. To understand why, one has to look at the company behind it and how it nearly conquered the semiconductor world before losing its edge. A decade ago, Samsung was unstoppable. It was, and still is, the world's second largest chip maker and the only one close to matching Taiwan's TSMC. Its strength in memory was legendary. DRAM ran every computer server, NAND stored the world's data, and Samsung produced both. But it also built logic chips, the brains of early iPhones, Nvidia GPUs, and Tesla's first autopilot systems. By 2015, Samsung was on top, mastering the 14 nanometer process and winning Apple's business. For a brief time, it seemed it might overtake TSMC. Then came the shift. Apple became a direct competitor in smartphones. Depending on Samsung to build its iPhone, chips was like asking a rival to sharpen your sword. Apple left, taking its chip production to TSMC, a foundry that built chips for everyone but competed with no one. Samsung's advantage began to erode. Unlike TSMC, it was stretched thin across too many fronts. Phones, displays, memory, and foundry services. Its 10 nanometer process fell behind schedule. Yields dropped. When TSMC ramped up five and three nanometer production, Samsung was still fixing its seven nanometer line. Yields hovered around 40%. One by one, major customers left. Nvidia, Qualcomm, Tesla. Each departure drained billions and eroded confidence. In 2021, Samsung tried to reset everything. It announced a new factory in Taylor, Texas, a quiet town northeast of Austin, and promised it would be the most advanced semiconductor facility ever built on US soil. The $17 billion project was intended to prove that advanced chip making could thrive in America again. Taylor seemed ideal. Close to major tech companies like Tesla, Google, and Qualcomm, surrounded by flat, geologically stable land far from natural disasters. The goal was to begin construction in 2021, start producing four nanometer chips in 2024, and push toward two nanometer technology soon after. But building a fab isn't like building a skyscraper. It's an exercise in atomic precision. Every decision, from power layout to airflow, starts with one key choice, the node, the size of the transistors the fab will produce, and the first customer's chip design. That chip becomes the calibration point for every process in the facility. Samsung chose 4 nanometers, a proven and mature node. But then, the AI boom hit, and the world shifted toward 3 nanometers and below. TSMC was already producing Apple and Nvidia chips on its new process. Samsung, desperate not to fall behind, made a bold move. It decided to pivot the Texas Fab from 4 nanometers to 2 nanometers mid-build. It sounded visionary. It was catastrophic. That single change turned order into chaos. It required new machines, new chemicals, new workflows, a total redesign. Even in Korea, Samsung was still struggling with the 2NM node. Overnight, the cost ballooned from $17 billion to $50 billion. The timeline fell apart before the first walls were finished. Then came the fight with the ground itself. The soil under Taylor looks calm, but it's caliche, a hard, uneven mix that's fine for roads, but not stable enough for atomic level precision. A fab can't shake, not even a little. Inside an EUV lithography machine, the mirrors must remain still within nanometers. Any vibration misaligns the laser and ruins millions of dollars of wafers. To fix this, Samsung built one of the most extreme foundations ever made. Workers drilled over 20,000 shafts, each about 35 meters deep, 
filling them with half a million cubic yards of concrete, enough to build several skyscrapers. The entire fab sits on a floating platform anchored to bedrock, isolating it from the shifting soil. It's designed to cancel every tremor from trucks, trains, or even wind. In the end, all that engineering exists to make the ground absolutely still, because at two nanometers, stillness is survival. At this node, the transistor itself changes shape. Traditional flat transistors gave way to FinFETs years ago, but at two nanometers, even those fail. Electrons behave like waves instead of particles. So engineers invented a new design, Gate All Around, or GAA. Instead of one tall fin, it uses horizontal nanosheets of silicon, tiny ribbons only a few atoms thick, wrapped completely by the gate. This allows more control and less leakage, but it demands near impossible precision. Each nanosheet must align within fractions of an angstrom. The only tool that can do this is EUV lithography, which uses light reflected off mirrors polished smoother than any other surface on Earth. A tiny vibration or misalignment ruins everything. That's why Samsung needed such an extreme foundation and environment. While engineers fought physics, construction raced against time. To speed things up, Samsung industrialized the entire process. Instead of pouring concrete section by section, it used precast construction, thousands of slabs and beams made off-site and shipped in. The site consumed nearly all the precast capacity of Texas for weeks. The structure rose fast, like an industrial Lego set. But when the walls were up, the next problem appeared, power. A semiconductor fab consumes electricity like a small city, running non-stop. Taylor, however, is connected to one of America's most unstable grids. Texas operates its own isolated system, vulnerable to blackouts. In 2021, a winter storm crippled it for days. For a chip plant, a millisecond of lost power can destroy millions in production. So Samsung built redundancy everywhere. Two independent high voltage lines, backup substations and internal power systems capable of keeping the fab alive even if the state grid fails. It's one of the most elaborate private power systems in the country. Then came water. Making chips requires staggering amounts of it, millions of gallons per day for cleaning, etching and rinsing. Samsung built its own water treatment facility beside the fab, capable of recycling over 90% of what it uses. It draws from the Carrizo Wilcox aquifer and purifies every drop that touches a wafer. But at two nanometers, even microscopic impurities can kill yields. So every pipe and filter had to be redesigned. What should have taken weeks stretched into months. And then the air. Unlike Arizona's dust problem, Texas air brings humidity and pollution. Moisture, ozone, and industrial fumes can damage delicate chemical processes inside the fab. Samsung installed advanced filtration towers that scrub particles smaller than viruses, then keep temperature, humidity, and pressure within ultra-tight tolerances. Inside, the clean room feels like a sealed bubble. Air flows from ceiling to floor, perfectly smooth, sweeping away any particle before it can touch silicon. The Taylor clean room spans more than 10 football fields, making it one of the largest and cleanest spaces ever built. Beyond air and water lies chemistry. Chip making runs on gases and acids, nitrogen, hydrogen, neon, and sulfuric acid, so pure that even a single molecule of contamination can ruin a wafer. The site hosts massive gas farms and generators to supply everything. Still, much of the chemistry is imported from Asia, thousands of miles away, until local plants catch up. Even the blank silicon wafers come from Japan. Every step relies on a global supply chain stretched across continents. But none of these obstacles compares to the toughest, people. A fab's success depends on experience, the unwritten knowledge of how to run a process. Samsung flew hundreds of engineers from Korea and hired locals, but none had built a 2NM fab before. Meanwhile, TSMC in Arizona started its project with an advantage. Its engineers had already perfected the same process in Taiwan. They brought that experience with them. 
Samsung had to invent everything from scratch. A new process, a new workforce, and a new country. The result was delay and uncertainty. Even with its walls finished and machines installed, the Taylor Fab struggled to reach stable yields. Because in chip making, you can copy machines, but not mastery. For TSMC, the formula is simple. Focus. The company builds chips for others, not itself. It doesn't compete with customers. That focus builds trust, brings more business, funds R&D, and keeps yields high, around 90%. Samsung tries to do everything. Make phones, displays, memory, and logic. That divided focus costs it dearly. Without a stable stream of customers to tune its processes, every new fab becomes an uphill climb. But just as the Taylor project seemed doomed, a lifeline appeared. Tesla stepped in with a $16, $5 billion deal through 2033. Samsung would produce Tesla's next generation AI6 chip, the brain for self-driving cars, humanoid robots, and AI training systems. The chip will be two to three times faster than its predecessor and combine functions that used to require two chips. For Tesla, it's a strategic move a dedicated line near its Austin headquarters. Engineers can collaborate directly on design and testing, something impossible with overseas fabs. For Samsung, it's a chance to turn the lights on and finally stabilize yields. Production is targeted for 2028, scaling by 2030. Taylor was meant to be proof that America could regain leadership in advanced chip making. Instead, it became a harsh lesson in how difficult that dream really is. Even with billions in investment, leading-edge fabrication can't simply be copied. Each factory is a living system, a blend of chemistry, physics, and human skill that takes decades to master. TSMC's Arizona Fab is already producing chips and ramping its next node. Samsung's Texas site is still learning to crawl. Yet beneath the frustration, there's progress. The foundation holds steady. The clean rooms hum. Engineers tune recipes wafer by wafer. If they succeed, Taylor could become the cornerstone of a new American semiconductor era. The challenge is enormous, but the stakes are higher still. Every field from AI, data centers, and electric vehicles depends on chips smaller than a virus. Whoever masters their production will shape the future of technology and global power. And on a quiet stretch of Texas land surrounded by cranes and concrete, that future is still being built, one atom at a time.